Hey guys, today I'll show you a fantasy thriller TV series named W2 Worlds. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The drama begins in a comic world where the handsome man Chul is the protagonist of a webtoon comic series called W. In his sophomore year of high school, he clinched the Olympic gold medal in shooting and became a nationwide sports celebrity. Then one day, his parents and siblings were fatally shot by a mysterious figure in a black cloak who later discarded the gun in a trash heap near Chul's home. The police recovered the weapon and recognized it as the one Chul used at the Olympics. Neighbors testified that after the Olympics, Chul gave up shooting to study computer engineering, which led to many disagreements with his father. This may have been seen as a possible motive for the crime, leading to Chul's arrest as a prime suspect. He awaited his trial in prison, unable to attend the hastily arranged funeral of his family, not only bearing a huge injustice, but also missing the chance to see his loved ones for the last time. In court, the prosecutor responsible for the case zealously pushed for Chul's death penalty, as he had political aspirations, and convicting Chul would be advantageous for his career. Chul was viewed as a pariah by the public, and if Han could secure the death sentence, it would be beneficial for his own advancement. The scene shifts to the real world, where the young girl, Ju, a resident doctor from the local university hospital, was called to the professor's office after failing to hear the phone ring and making the professor wait. Expecting the worst, she was surprised to find that the professor merely wanted to know the continuation of the W storyline. It turns out, Ju's father, Sung, worked as a cartoonist and was the author of the popular comic, and the professor was one of its dedicated fans. The professor asked Ju to find out who the real culprit was. When Ju called her father's assistant, she found out that her father had mysteriously disappeared. His assistants had been working outside his office all night but never saw him leave. Later, when they went to deliver coffee, Sung was not in his room. Despite a thorough search, there was no sign of him. Sung disappeared without a word, leaving behind his phone and wallet. With the deadline approaching, the assistants were frantic. Ju speculated that her father might have needed a break before finishing the final episode of his webtoon. But the assistant disagreed, saying Sung had grown tired of this webtoon series and had even talked about killing off the protagonist Chul several times. The assistant showed Ju the drawing board, which displayed a blood-covered Chul lying on the ground with the mysterious figure in the black cloak standing nearby. According to the assistant, Sung had been drawing this scene the previous night with a strange smile, seemingly enjoying it. The assistant was worried that releasing this scene online would provoke protests from the fans who were eager for Chul to catch the criminal and have a satisfying revenge. The assistant stepped out for a moment, and Ju found a bizarre drawing on her father's desk with the words, Rather than being devoured, it's better to do the devouring. Suddenly, a bloodied hand reached out from the drawing board and pulled her sexy body into the comic world. When Ju opened her eyes, she found herself at the top floor of a hotel, with the bloodied Chul lying in front of her. He had just been stabbed and had suffered a pneumothorax. Ju didn't quite understand what was happening, but she knew saving him was crucial. Despite her fear, she mustered the courage to insert a pen into Chul's chest, saving his life. As the ambulance took Chul away, hotel staff mentioned that the injured man was Chul, a name that sounded familiar to Ju. It then dawned on her that what she had just seen was almost identical to the scene her father had drawn, and that Chul was the main character of her father's webtoon. As she was confused, she saw a line of text appeared out of thin air saying, To be continued, and with that, Ju came to her senses, realizing that she was still in her father's office. The assistant came in and told Ju that her father hadn't disappeared. He had just published the latest episode. Ju then saw the newly published comic and was shocked to find herself in it. A female doctor who saved Chul was also named Ju, identical to her in real life. Ju realized she had just entered the comic world, and everything she did became part of the storyline. Fearful, she told the assistant that this couldn't have been drawn by her father, but must have been created by Chul after he came back to life. However, no one believed her smelly bullshit. In the comic world, based on the continued storyline, Chul now becomes a super-rich tycoon, his life nothing short of legendary. Twelve years ago, he won an Olympic gold medal, and soon after, his entire family was murdered, with Chul as the prime suspect. He was imprisoned but eventually released due to insufficient evidence. After a year living as a pariah, he decided to end his life. However, on the river bridge, the phrase, come back victory, flashed through his mind at the last moment. Chul grabbed the bridge railing and he survived and was determined to find the real culprit. Chul woke up in the hospital, searching everywhere for Ju but to no avail. 
Earlier, Ju had left a business card with hotel staff, which listed the local university hospital she worked for, but this hospital didn't exist in the comic world, nor did the phone number and email on the card. The police suspected Ju was an accomplice to the assailant, but Chol thought differently. He claimed Ju seemed to hold the key to revealing his existence. This woman had the key to his life. Over at Ju's side, she confided in her assistant about her venture into the comic world. She believed that the comic was self-generating and that her father had definitely been kidnapped, now trapped within the comic itself. However, the assistant didn't take Ju's words seriously, dismissing them as nonsense. At that moment, Sung returned, looking absent-minded and worn out. When Ju asked whether he had drawn the last two episodes, her father admitted he had, but seemed to be hiding something. Right after Ju left, her father instructed the assistant to retrieve poison from the hospital, plotting to poison Chul. By accident, the assistant revealed this plan to Ju. Despite telling herself it was just a comic, Ju couldn't help but worry about Chul. She called her father to ask why he would want Chul to die just after surviving. Her father asked her why she did those useless things, which struck Ju as odd since useless things likely referred to her saving Chul on the rooftop. It turned out her father knew everything, including her foray into the comic world. As they spoke, Ju didn't notice the scenery changing around her and the call was cut short. She found herself back in the comic world, where the university hospital was called by another name. Familiar with the hospital, Ju sneaked into the VIP ward. Meanwhile, in the real world, her father was drawing that very scene, having arranged for a nurse to switch the medication and inject Chul with a lethal substance. However, the next scene automatically appeared on the drawing board, Ju bursting into the hospital room. As the story developed beyond his control, the attending doctor arrived. Ju tried to flee but was stopped by Chul, who had been waiting for her. In the hospital room, Ju also encountered two other characters from the comic, the heroine So He, who was also Chul's secretary, and his bodyguard Yoon. Ju was well aware of everything about Chul, including conversations he had had with friends and even his inner monologues. This convinced Chul that Ju indeed held the key to his life. Ju persuaded Chul to help her leave quietly, as her identity would not allow her to be questioned by the police. Chul agreed to let her go, but made plans to meet again after his discharge to clear everything up. Ju left the hospital successfully and waited at a bus stop for a long time, expecting the to-be-continued caption that would signal her return to the real world, but it never appeared. Suddenly, her watch began spinning rapidly, and she experienced the passage of several days and nights in moments. Chul arrived at the bus stop in a sports car, fully recovered, and Ju realized two months had passed, even though she had only been sitting at the stop for half an hour. Ju understood that time in the comic world passed as the plot necessitated. Periods when the protagonist wasn't active were simply skipped over. Now it was summer, and she was still in the same clothes she wore two months earlier. Sick of the dirty girl, Chul had to take Ju shopping for new clothes. Ju mulled over how to get back to reality. Since this was a serialized comic, some event had to occur to conclude the episode and allow for a pause so she could leave. She then came up with a plan. Stepping out of the dressing room, Ju approached Chul and without a word, slapped him in his handsome face. When nothing happened as she had anticipated, she kissed him instead but without using her tongue. That's when the caption appeared. Ju quickly ran back into the dressing room and left the comic world. Ju returned to the hospital office and heard from her colleagues that she had only been away for half an hour, yet the scene of her kissing Chul had already been updated in the latest chapter of the comic. The assistant also noticed the comic had been updated, but they were certain they had only completed half of it. They were confused as to who could have uploaded it. Just then, Sung ordered the editorial department to delete the latest chapter. He wanted to redraw it. Then he dismissed the staff, announcing that tonight would be the final episode, which he intended to finish alone. The team was dissolved. Ju asked her father what was going on. Sung explained that Chul was a monster, a creation of his own comic, and since he had created this monster, it was his responsibility to destroy it. He told Ju to forget everything, that he would be the sole madman and would end it all. With his drawing board in tow, her father locked himself in a hotel room to work on his creation. In the comic world, Chul was driving on the road when suddenly a large truck charged straight towards him. Chul hit the brakes hard, and just as time stopped and the scene froze, he seized the opportunity to floor the accelerator, narrowly avoiding the collision and escaping disaster. Chul got out of the car and questioned the sky for why and who exactly was behind all these. Back in the real world, Sung was shocked to discover that the already drawn car accident scene had suddenly vanished, as if someone had erased it. His brush could no longer draw anything. 
Then suddenly, a line of text appeared on the drawing board, the very words Chul had spoken. He was so frightened that he fell to the floor. After returning from the comic world, Ju arrived at her father's house and found out that he had dismissed everyone. All the others had left, except for the assistant who stayed behind because he thought the whole situation was odd. The assistant organized the events that had transpired and told Ju that her father planned to kill Chul. It's Ju who appeared in the comic and saved Chul. Coincidentally, the dress Ju was wearing was identical to the one Chul bought for her in the comic. The assistant panicked as he realized that Ju was telling the truth and she had really entered the comic world. He also wanted to enter the comic world to see for himself, but Ju had no idea how she had crossed over. It just sort of happened, and in order to return, she even kissed Chul. Upon hearing about the smelly kiss, the assistant curiously asked what it felt like to kiss a comic character. And if Chul was handsome in person, Ju began to reminisce about the moments she spent with Chul. After that, Ju dug into her father's records and discovered his emotional journey. When her parents divorced, Ju left with her mother, leaving her father alone. He spent his days drinking and had no interest in anything, unable to draw or continue the comic series. He then grew tired of Chul's story and wanted the comic to end at that point. That's why her father arranged for Chul to jump into the river. It's revealed that after drawing that scene, he went to sleep. Waking up, he found everything had changed. Chul didn't jump. Instead, he grabbed the railing and survived. Her father took this as a sign of a new beginning and decided to continue the story. He revitalized Chul, who became a wealthy man, invested in a TV station, and created a crime investigation show called W, an abbreviation for who and why. The program featured various experts, and through it, he hoped he could find the real killer of his family. Sung achieved success with this comic series, but with it came many baffling occurrences, like sometimes the pen would not obey, and at times the plot seemed to generate itself. Sung knew that Chul was actually alive and a monster who he believed would one day come to kill him. Later, Ju was at the bus stop on the phone with the assistant when she suddenly fainted and disappeared, finding herself back in the comic world. Previously, she vanished from a dressing room in a clothing store, and so he, not quite believing she had gone to tidy up, opened the door to find Ju inside, passed out. The shop assistants couldn't explain how a living person could vanish into thin air and then reappear just as mysteriously. Upon hearing the news, Chul rushed to the store and carried Ju's heavy body back to his home. Meanwhile, the police arrived arrived at Chul's place. Chul tried to hide Ju from them, not wanting the officers to realize she was right there under their noses. Before long, Ju woke up. Still ill and groggy, she claimed to know everything about Chul, who had developed a shadow over his life after his family was murdered, choosing to live only in the penthouse suite of a hotel with a gun hidden under his pillow. Ju knew these details because she had seen them in the comic, and what saddened her most was the scene on the river bridge. She feared Chul might truly take his own life. Chul was puzzled by Ju's knowledge about him, as if she was his stalker and a peeping Tom sent by Jesus. He wondered just how much she really knew about him. That night, Chul woke from a nightmare and opened his room door to find a mysterious figure with a gun pointed at him. After a struggle, the assailant knocked Chul down and left via the elevator. Chul followed, prying the closing elevator doors open but found it empty. This mysterious person was actually Sung, who had come to kill Chul. Chul narrowly escaped. The plan to kill him had failed once again. In frustration, Sung smashed the drawing board and fled the hotel room with his bag. The next day, Ju woke up to find herself unfortunately not naked in Chul's room. She pondered how she might return to her own world. Last time, a kiss had done the trick, but she wondered what it would be this time. After taking a shower, Ju slipped into the sexy lingerie that was laid out in the bathroom. With eyes closed, she flung open her bathrobe to show Chul, not realizing that Chul's bodyguard was also present. He hastily excused himself, but Chul remained surprisingly calm. Ju, now holding a gun at Chul, found that still nothing happened. Chul asked her about these strange actions, and Ju explained that kissing him was a way to disappear. Chul found this idea laughable. To test it, he kissed Ju without using his spicy tongue, but nothing happened, and she remained right there. Ju clarified that she needed to cause a strong emotional response in Chul, as he was the protagonist in this world. She accidentally let it slip and quickly changed the subject. Chul didn't believe in what Ju spoke of and didn't care. What mattered to him was what truth lay behind. Chul pointed a gun at Ju, demanding answers. Scared yet defiant, Ju refused to reveal the truth, thinking Chul would never actually shoot. To her shock, he pulled the trigger. The bullet passed through Ju's body, causing her to faint, but bizarrely, there was no blood. 
Before firing, Chol had guessed that Ju wouldn't die, suspecting she wasn't ordinary and perhaps came from another world. He wanted to know where she was from and what that world was like. Ju wouldn't say, but Chol wasn't in a rush. He allowed her to stay at his place for the time being. He mentioned he was off to Busan, then New York. Ju blurted out she loves him in an attempt to stir his emotions and return to her reality. But nothing happened, and there was no to-be-continued prompt. Instead, Chol gave her a skeptical look. Ju urged him to be careful, seemingly aware that something bad was going to happen to Chul. But within the comic world, she couldn't know what specifically would occur. After repeated cautions, they shared an awkward moment, looking into each other's eyes. Chul inquired about Ju's age and marital status. Learning she was single, he seemed relieved and gave her a wink before leaving, which made her heart race. Ju later discovered that she had been summoned to this place because Chul had once said that Ju was the key to his life. It was at that moment in the comic that the female lead role shifted from Sohi to Ju. Elsewhere, the nurse who administered the injections is under investigation at the police station. She has no recollection of why she drugged someone, nor why she attempted to flee after her arrest. It's as if she were hypnotized. The case currently seems to have no leads. Meanwhile, the large truck that nearly killed Chul vanished under the surveillance cameras. Chul recalled that on the day he was stabbed, Chul received a phone call from someone claiming to know the murderer of his parents. For no reason, he believed them, and avoiding his bodyguard, went to the rooftop. Now looking back, he has no idea why he did that. Over the years, in pursuit of the killer, Chul purchased a TV station and created a program specifically for solving cases, achieving a 99% success rate. The only case without a clue is that of his family's murder. Chul has even started to suspect that the killer might be from another dimension, like Ju, and thus impossible to find in his lifetime. Chul has many servants attending to Ju, treating her as if she were his fiancée. Whenever Ju and Chul talk on the phone, her heart flutters, and just before hanging up, she impulsively tells him that she loves him. So he takes Ju to the rooftop restaurant for wine, but excuses herself and leaves. The bodyguard takes Ju to the table, where she is intentionally recognized by a waiter as the woman wanted on TV. The waiter discreetly calls the police. Realizing she's been identified, Ju runs away and contacts Chul. He instructs his bodyguard to assist her, but the police are already in pursuit. As she's about to be captured, Ju passes the phone Chul gave her to the bodyguard, leaving no trace of Chul and surrenders herself. Ju is taken to the police station for questioning. She can't answer any questions about her home address or ID number. Eventually, she's detained. The media covers the story and everyone suspects Ju except for Chul, who steadfastly believes in her innocence. Chul visits Ju in prison and tells her she's been labeled a criminal. He warns her that prison life will only get harder and that the only way out is to tell him the whole truth. After Ju confesses, revealing that she lives in another world and that Chul's world exists within a comic book, Chul experiences a surge of emotions and the caption to be continued appears again, which allows Ju to vanish from in front of Chul and return to the real world but still dressed in her prison uniform. Several days have passed in the comic world, but in reality she's been gone for only 30 minutes. During this time, the comic has been updated, but Sung still hasn't returned. Finally, the assistant believes everything Ju has said. In the comic world, it was thought that Ju had vanished into thin air. The police were in complete disarray. Although Ju's story sounded absurd, Chul couldn't help but believe it. During a call with the minister, Chul stated that everything in this world was fake, a completely non-existent world. The moment he uttered those words, the whole world suddenly froze, leaving only Chul able to move. Back in the real world, the assistant decided to forcefully conclude the comic so that Ju wouldn't have to return to the comic world and continue being imprisoned. However, Ju was worried about what would happen to Chul after the comic ended. The assistant, adhering to his own opinion, erased the last issue's to-be-continued sign, declaring the comic's conclusion. Suddenly, the drawing board turned into a blank slate. On Chul's side, when he realized the world was fictitious, the entire world came to a standstill. Chul saw a glowing plane at the end of the corridor. He had seen such a plane on the rooftop before. It was through this plane that he had reached out and pulled Ju into the comic. It seemed this plane could lead to another world. Chul took a gun from someone for protection and then resolutely stepped into the plane, into Ju's world. Arriving in the real world, he walked in the rain, spotting a large advertisement for the W comic on a bus. Ignoring the relentless traffic, he walked up to the bus and saw that the comic's protagonist looked exactly like him. Later, Chul went to a bookstore and read the entire comic series, finally believing what Ju had said about his world being inside a comic. 
Chul was overwhelmed and sat in the bookstore until closing time. Chul went to the hospital looking for Ju, claiming to be her fiancé. Ju was shocked to see him. Chul winked at her and pulled her outside to talk. This time, he had come to Ju's world, having read the comic and accepted everything. However, knowing the truth, he now regretted not heeding Ju's advice to reject it. Ju had surgery scheduled and asked Chul to wait for her, promising she'd be back soon after her work. Before she left, Chul kissed her, but by the time Ju's surgery was finished, Chul had already gone. Chul went to the place of the cartoonist Sung and broke in. Inside, he saw many design drawings, which made him even more upset. The world he had lived in for so long was all fake. Even his friends were created out of nothing, just rough sketches in the real world. Chul also unexpectedly discovered that Ju was the daughter of his maker, Sung. In the next scene, Sung finally turned on his computer after getting home and called his daughter. It was then that Chul emerged from the shadows, startling him a lot. Chul wanted to talk, but Sung secretly grabbed a knife and stabbed at Chul. Chul quickly subdued Sung, aiming a gun at him. Although he had the chance to kill him, Chul refrained because after all, Sung was Ju's father. Despite Sung's persistent attempts to kill him, Ju had always been trying to save Chul. Later, Ju received a call from her father, and hearing Chul's voice, she realized that he had gone to see her dad. She immediately notified the assistant. Chul harbored deep hatred for Sung. It's then revealed that when Chul was attacked on the rooftop previously, a glowing drawing board appeared before him. He reached out and pulled someone into it, but the first person he brought in was not Ju, but the cartoonist Sung. Seriously wounded, Chul begged him for help, but instead of helping, Sung stabbed him again, intending to finish him off. Chul fought back with all his might, and although stabbed, Sung was unharmed, which made Chul know that this was the person who had repeatedly tried to kill him. After arriving at his studio, Chul came to understand Sung, an unaccomplished man in his 50s who took to alcohol to get through his days. So he created Chul, a character who was the complete opposite of himself, as an escape from reality. After his divorce, Sung felt defeated and didn't want to continue the W comic, so he began devising ways to kill off Chul. He arranged for Chul to jump off the river bridge, but in the end, Chul didn't die. Sung confessed to Chul that it wasn't him who saved Chul. It was Chul's own willpower that allowed him to survive and alter his predetermined fate. When Chul first developed his own will, Sung felt affection for him and softened, so he continued the comic. But as time went on, things began to spiral out of control. Chul, using everything Sung gave him, understood the entire world and began to control the direction of the comic, which tormented him mentally. Initially, Sung thought he had mental issues, consulted a psychiatrist, and sought advice from friends, but no one believed him. Although Sung thought of escaping, he stayed for his daughter. Throughout his daughter's growth, he was unable to provide for her, so he decided to persevere for her sake. Despite the pain, at least drawing comics could earn money to leave for his daughter. After the revelation, Sung deliberately provoked Chul, hoping he would shoot him, but he knew that Chul was originally designed as a righteous character, so he wouldn't possibly shoot. Chul couldn't escape the traits assigned to him. He demanded Sung to draw the intended ending, to restore everything to normal and not leave his friends in the comic in a state of limbo. To Chul, he wanted to find the cloaked murderer of his parents and then continue his ordinary life. However, Sung told him there was no culprit. The cloaked villain was just a plot device to make Chul stronger, and even Sung himself didn't know who the killer was. Chul found it absurd. He had endured so much and spent days searching for the killer, only to find out that it was a spur-of-the-moment creation by Sung and had never truly existed. If it weren't for Chul's awakening, Sung would have continued drawing, and Chul would have remained in the dark until his death. Unable to tolerate any more, Chul finally broke free from his character constraints and shot Sung. Sung fell after being shot, but Chul didn't kill him. He deliberately avoided vital spots. After shooting, Chul left, and the assistant arrived just in time. Chul told the assistant to get him to the hospital quickly, and there was still a chance to save him. Sung was rushed to the hospital for emergency surgery, and he survived. The comic was updated as well. It revealed that Chul discovered he was the main character of a comic who came into the real world and shot the cartoonist. Having lost his mental support, Chul wandered around and finally left a letter for Ju at the hospital. In the real world, Ju did receive such a letter. In it, Chul expressed his desire to leave and end everything. He said that for a protagonist who had always been searching for the murderer but ended up being a murderer himself, this was the most appropriate ending. At that moment, Chul was on the same river bridge, just like years ago, he leaped off. Ju saw this conclusion through the comics with the word The End marked in the corner of the frame. The comic had finally ended. Ju went to the riverside but didn't find Chul. 
He seemed to have vanished from this world, and all traces of his existence, including the surveillance footage of him entering and leaving Sung's home, the gun he dropped, and the bullet extracted from Sung's body, had all disappeared. Ju told her father about these events. The police were investigating the shooting of Sung, and no one knew how to explain it to the authorities. They certainly couldn't say a comic character committed the crime in the real world. In the end, the story was unified under the claim that Sung attempted suicide, and the investigation was closed. After the comic's ending was published, the readers couldn't accept it and started a petition to bring Chul back to life, but his return was impossible. Sung also planned to retire from drawing. Later, a drowned body was discovered in the river. Based on the timing, location, and physical description, it was very likely Chul. Ju had not given up looking for Chul these days, but after she went to the police station to identify the body, she knew at first glance that it wasn't him. Since Chul's body was never found, Ju still held a glimmer of hope. Ju asked her father what happens to the characters in the comic after it ends, if they stay in that world, living happily until death, or everything just ends there. Sung knew that his daughter was still not at peace with Chul's fate, and was now probing the possibility of changing the ending. He had thought about it himself since Chul hadn't killed him. He had even debated whether to spare Chul's life, but when he tried to change the ending, he found it impossible to alter. Moreover, Ju had become the female lead of the comic. To prevent her from getting drawn in again, letting everything end here was the best conclusion. It seemed the story was about to conclude there, but Ju still found it hard to let go. She often wondered if Chul was still in the cold water, forever. Sung and his friends took a trip to New Zealand to unwind. Meanwhile, Ju's life temporarily returned to calmness. One day, she was reluctantly dragged to a blind date by her professor. Upon seeing her date, Ju masked her embarrassment with a smile. She excused herself to the restroom to call a colleague, but suddenly, the phone signal weakened, and static noises came through the phone. Water started flooding in, gradually rising above Ju's head. Ju found herself in the river, and she saw Chul floating with his eyes closed, not far away. She tried to save him, but her phone accidentally fell into the river and the image of Chul drifted further away. When Ju came to her senses, she was still in the restroom, her wet hair a testament that what she had seen was not an illusion. She then borrowed a phone from her date and reopened the comic, which had originally ended. To her shock, the caption, The End, had now turned into a To Be Continued. The comic had restarted. Ju shared this news with the assistant, who couldn't understand why the comic would continue on its own, especially since Chul had already lost the will to live and had decided to commit suicide. At that moment, on the river bridge, a mysterious figure in a black cloak stood. Ju got out her drawing board and asked the assistant to continue drawing to save Chul. She realized that he wasn't dead, and his time had just stopped at that moment. As long as the comic was updated, he could be brought back to life. The assistant tried to draw, but nothing happened. Just when they were about to give up, the assistant recalled that Sung had once said that Chul was actually a character created by Ju. As a child, during her parents' quarrels, Ju would draw in her room, and it was then that she created Chul. Thus, Ju had the power to change the direction of the comic. It's revealed that the comic story of W was based on a tale Ju had imagined as a child. Back then, she felt sorry for an athlete who made a mistake at the Olympics and failed to win the gold medal. So she created a new character, a handsome high school student and national shooting team member who would win gold at the Olympics with a last-minute comeback shot. Ju had always regarded him as her ideal type. Back in the present, although Ju hadn't drawn for many years, she still had some fundamental drawing skills. She decided to personally draw and save Chul. Despite being a bit rusty, Ju did not give up and sketched out Chul's figure. The comic continued, and the rescue team passing under the bridge happened to find and save Chul from the waters, while Ju was found back in the comic world and passed out in the prison. Chul woke up in the comic world's home and learned that in the comic world, the current time was after Ju had vanished from the prison. Since the day Ju disappeared, Chul had also lost contact and had inexplicably fallen into the water, luckily saved by a passing rescue team. Meanwhile, Ju was in a prison van. Chul stopped the van, spoke with the prison staff, and had a brief conversation with Ju. She instructed Chul to use legal means to get her out and said they would discuss the details afterward. She told him that her injured father had recovered and gone abroad for a trip. This time it was she who had saved him and hoped Chul could find a new life purpose. Everything from the past had ended, and from now on, his life was no longer her father's comic creation, but a sequel made by the two of them. 
Ju's preference was for a sweet romance. But being alive again, Chul felt complex emotions. He looked at his friends, struggling to imagine that they were all comic characters. The day after, Chul went to the prison to visit Ju. He confronted her, questioning why she decided to take control of his life. Once, he was so desperate to stay alive, but her father insisted on drawing his death. Now, Chul didn't even want to live, but Ju made the call to bring him back to life on her own. Chul felt like a toy, something Ju would play with when she was bored, entering the comic world to enjoy a bit of romance before returning to reality. Ju felt wronged and told Chul that she did all this because she loved him. Her sudden confession threw Chul into emotional turmoil. The scene ended and Ju returned to reality, but her confession had shaken Chul's resolve. Soon enough, Ju was summoned back into the comic world. Chul stopped blaming her. In fact, he was scared, terrified of never seeing Ju again. He walked up to her and kissed his love, a tongueless kiss that led to Ju's insomnia. At 30, the happiest moment of her life was in prison. Chul thought of a way to get Ju out. He would craft a story that she was his wife, secretly married last year in America. This could explain the doubts surrounding her. She was running because she was scared of the secret marriage coming to light. And so, Ju was released from prison and overnight became Chul's wife. It took her a while to adjust to the fact that she was really married. Chul asked female staff about what kind of romance women like. Following the recommendation, he prepared to experience those romantic things with Ju, like cuddling in bed while reading a book. But their sweet time didn't last long. Chul received a mysterious call with a raspy voice asking where he was and why he was alive again. Each word spoken appeared as subtitles before Chul's eyes. With Ju's appearance, Chul's secretary So He decided to resign, handing her resignation letter to Yoon. Before leaving, she shook hands with Yoon, who was horrified to see So He's hand momentarily turn transparent. Chul received another mysterious call. The caller asked where he was, who allowed him to die, and why he had been waiting so long. The caller revealed himself as the one who killed Chul's family ten years ago, a marksman just like Chul. The man didn't allow Chul to die, and the story had to end with a fight to the death between them. The mysterious person continued, stating that now Chul had a new family member, Ju, and just as he had killed all of Chul's family ten years ago, now it was Ju's turn. After hanging up, Chul realized why the comic had restarted. It's all because the mysterious person had awakened. Chul sent people to trace the call, but they couldn't pinpoint its location. It seemed the mysterious person was indeed real but not given a physical form, no identity, existing only to kill Chul's family as needed by the plot. Since the killer's next target was Ju, Chul was worried about her safety. He wanted her to stay in the real world, but Ju couldn't freely control her movement between the two worlds. Chul held Ju tight and urged her to stay home and not go out, which made her feel depressed. She had just been released from prison, only to feel like she was in another prison at home. Chul was puzzled, wondering if the mysterious person was under Sung's control, but he couldn't figure out why Sung would order the killing of his own daughter. During their conversation, Ju cut her hand while chopping vegetables. Chul noticed Ju's hand bleeding, which meant she was no longer immortal in this comic world. The scene shifts to Ju returning to the real world and flipping through the latest comics. She learned about the conversation between the mysterious person and Chul, and that her life was at risk of being shot at any time. After resigning, so he drowned her sorrows in alcohol, unable to get Chul out of her mind. With the help of the liquor, she called Chul, only to discover that her hand had become translucent. Then, looking in the mirror, she saw that her entire body had turned semi-transparent. When Chul heard Sohee's chicken scream over the phone, he immediately set out to find her. Chul realized that Sohee was becoming transparent because her connection with him was no longer close. In the comic world, characters who are no longer needed by the protagonist would vanish forever. However, once a character's presence is essential, they become a fixed character in the comic, like Ju. As for the mysterious killer, Chul had given up searching for him so the killer should have disappeared. But why then had the killer reappeared? It turns out, when the comic world froze in time, Chul came to the real world through a luminous plane, and the mysterious killer followed him, learning all the truths through the comic. Angry at discovering they were not a real person, the killer was more desperate than Chul to uncover their true identity. Hearing of Chul's death, the killer was even more enraged. Hence, he prevented the comic from ending, wanting to have a decisive battle to the death with Chul. But not knowing how to return to the comic world, the killer wandered in the real world. Now, Ju received a call from the mysterious man at her father's house. Every word spoken by the mysterious man appeared before Ju. Terrified, she grabbed the assistant and fled in the car. They didn't get far before the mysterious man caught up with them, appearing out of nowhere in front of the car and shooting at Ju. 
At the moment the bullet inched closer, Ju was summoned by Chul into the comic world, narrowly escaping danger. In the real world, Ju disappeared, and the mysterious man returned to Sung's residence, followed his flight information, and suddenly appeared on the plane. When Sung went to the restroom, the mysterious man confronted him, demanding to know who he himself really was and where Chul was, urging him to find his physical body. Over on Ju's, she entered the comic world and appeared in Chul's car, recounting her recent ordeal. Chul embraced her without a kiss and took her to his secretary's house. So he had already become semi-transparent, and to prevent her from disappearing, it was essential to re-establish a close connection between Sohi and Chul. So Chul told her that his marriage to Ju was fake, and that Sohi was an important person to him, important for a lifetime. As a result, Sohi's sexy body stopped being transparent and returned to normal. Seeing Sohi like this, Ju felt guilty, thinking she had replaced Sohi as the main character of the comic, which had nearly caused her to vanish. She had initially intended to rescue Chul and start a sweet sequel, but the plot had later become a complete mess. Facing a disheartened Jew, Chul knelt down to tie her shoelaces. He took her hand and brought her to the rooftop where they first met, promising to leave this place together and draw an end to the entire story. In the story's conclusion, Chul woke up from a dream to find that everything from the moment he met Ju on the rooftop two months ago until now was all a dreamscape. Chul wished for everything to return to the beginning and urged Ju to forget him and live well. If she ever missed him, she should go to a bookstore and look at comic books. After saying this, Chul slowly backed away, apologizing for not fulfilling the romance Ju had in her heart, and then he jumped off the rooftop. Chul awoke again in the comic world, shedding tears as all returned to the start with the balcony assault, a servant saving him, and Yoon and Sohi by his side as if nothing had occurred. After Chul's leap, Ju was back in reality and kept her promise to depict this scene. On the other hand, the real culprit chased after Sung on a plane, demanding his true identity, seeking an identity after having killed three in the real world. Upon landing, the shaken Sung returned to Korea, visiting his daughter first. But Ju had collapsed from exhaustion. Her father, worried, saw in the comic that Chul had handed her a USB at their parting. Inside the USB was a letter from Chul, suggesting a reset to give W a perfect ending, where Chul finds the culprit who's then punished. The first step was to give the culprit a form to stop his ghostly existence. Chul had included data on hundreds from his investigations on the USB, and Sung had to create a new character, unlike any of them, to convince Chul finally and thus end the comic. What happened in the comic was deemed Chul's dream, but his subconscious still missed Ju, summoning her to the comic world multiple times, only to watch him from afar before returning to reality. On Ju's third visit, two months had passed in the comic world, and she was summoned to a hospital where her ring rolled to Chul, who complimented it without recognizing her. Back in reality, Ju bawled like a giant baby, and Chul never summoned her again, seemingly forgetting her forever. Her father began rewriting his story, calling back his assistant from home. Having drawn the culprit's face identical to his own for having once stabbed Chul in the comic, only this face could convince Chul of the real culprit. As planned, the comic world buzzed with the news of a break in the case. A delivery vehicle had caught the person ascending the roof on the day of Chul's stabbing. The surveillance zoom revealed Sung's face, and the real culprit, a paranoid former colleague of Chul's father, was caught, and the police found lots of evidence in the culprit's home. However, the prosecutor, to protect his career, sent someone to push the culprit off the building, disguising it as suicide and forging a confession to frame Chul, claiming that the killer took Chul's money to kill his own parents. When public opinion turned against Chul, Sung exposed the decayed prosecutor's deeds, leading to his arrest and the exoneration of Chul's family, a complete and satisfying conclusion. As for the romance, Chul and Sohee showed mutual affection without explicit development, but promised a positive future. The comic ends with this finale. Ju saw the new comic update where the murder suspect looked identical to her father. She rushed to find out the comic's new plots, and after hearing the entire ending, felt a sense of frustration. She couldn't leave any mark on the comic and could only look at it, reminiscing about all that happened with Chul. She often thought of Chul, covering her face with the comic book to cry in secret. Suddenly, the hospital's emergency broadcast announced casualties from a shooting incident at a TV program for W, where a suspicious figure had infiltrated and begun an indiscriminate shooting attack. Ju was stunned to see the news and went out to help. Unnoticed by her, in a daze, she had crossed back into the comic world. 
The shooting wasn't part of her father's plan, and it wasn't supposed to be the plot's direction. In the midst of the hospital's chaos, Chul grabbed Ju, asking her to check on a wounded person. He recognized Ju from the ring hanging around her neck. They had met before at the hospital, and Chul had even helped her pick up her ring once. Ju looked at Chul with sad eyes, puzzling him. In the real world, the assistant arrived at Sung's house and found him collapsed in front of his drawing board. The words he said to the assistant materialized in text form because Sung no longer had a face, which had been taken by the real culprit. The assistant fainted from shock upon seeing the faceless Sung, who had also lost his autonomy, completely controlled by the culprit within the drawing board. In the flashback, while Sung was drawing alone at home, the drawing board suddenly glowed. The culprit, now with a face, looked into the mirror and told Sung that this is his face and their souls are identical. He added that Sung also wanted to kill Chul not long ago, so their goals align perfectly. Sung was terrified and tried to shut off the drawing board, but the culprit reached out of it and grabbed his collar. From that moment on, the culprit ordered him to obey his commands. When the assistant returned, he found Sung in a faceless state, puppet-like, following the culprit's orders. Under these orders, he drew a gun and many bullets. With the gun and bullets, the culprit freely moved to the set of the W program, killed many people, then removed his hat in front of the camera, revealing his face, arrogantly delivering a message to Chul, saying that he would go for him and Chul should remember his face. After saying this, the culprit left through a special passage drawn by Sung, disappearing as if into thin air, leaving the police with no trace of him. After Ju re-entered the comic, she stole a white lab coat, pretending to be a doctor at the hospital, and also took some liquor. She found solace alone on the rooftop, where Chul also arrived by chance. Seeing Ju drinking, he offered her a drink. Ju kept staring at Chul, which he found odd. She explained that he resembled her husband, which is why she couldn't take her eyes off him. For several days afterward, Ju couldn't return to the real world. She had no money, no identity, and could only resort to stealing for necessities. In the cafeteria, she could only afford side dishes and was starving after several days. When she saw Sohee come to the hospital, Ju thought her house must be empty, so she slipped in to mooch food and drink and even stole some money. Unexpectedly, Chul showed up and caught Ju red-handed. Confronted by Chul, Ju couldn't answer anything. Chul wanted to take her to the police, but Ju calmly accepted it, knowing at least prison would provide food and shelter. But before they left, Ju wanted to take some food because she was so hungry. With an injury on the corner of her mouth, Chul helped her apply ointment. Already feeling aggrieved, Ju's emotions burst forth as she cried like a fat baby and said that she had been wandering for over a week to not interfere with Chul's life. But Chul kept appearing before her and being so kind. Ju's outburst was incomprehensible to Chul, who in the end did not hand her over to the police. After the culprit appeared, the public opinion became unfavorable for the prosecutor. The culprit already knew from Sung that the prosecutor's next plan was to kill himself, so he took the initiative to call the prosecutor and proposed they collaborate, promising to help him become president. At this time, Chul's mentor found Chul, telling him that he had recently received an email with an audio recording from 10 years ago, on the day Chul's family was murdered. In the recording, Chul was heard arguing with his father, even to the point where his father considered disowning him. Hearing this, Chul was shocked because he hadn't been home on the day of the incident. However, the recording was actually fabricated by Sung following the culprit's orders. Facing this incriminating evidence, even Chul's mentor, who had never doubted him over the past 10 years, was shaken. Chul didn't know how to explain, but insisted the recording was fake. Suddenly, a bullet came out of nowhere, killing the mentor instantly, and a gun appeared in Chul's hand, leaving him unable to defend himself. He hurriedly fled and was accidentally shot in the process. Ju was waiting for him in the car. With Chul wounded and weak, Ju told him to rest in the back seat while she drove. Along the way, Ju stopped at a pharmacy to buy medicine and saw the news of Chul shooting his mentor. She then realized that the perfect ending Sung and Chul wanted to bring about had failed. The comic world was now operating entirely according to the will of the culprit. At the prosecutor's office, evidence emerged confirming Chul was the real culprit. Ju took Chul to a secluded hotel, where he asked her if she knew him. Ju didn't answer, but at a time when the whole world was convinced Chul was the murderer, only Ju believed in him. She told Chul that this place wasn't safe and that they needed more medicine to continue treatment, so she had to leave to clear up the situation and find a solution. 
Her own identity wasn't important. Chol just needed to know that she was someone who wished for a perfect ending for him. After saying this, Ju kissed Chol before she quickly left the room. After returning to reality, the first thing Ju did was collect a lot of medication from the hospital. Then she went back to my father's place. Ju was terrified when she found her father without a face and screamed in a chicken voice as she ran out of the house. After learning the full story from the assistant, Ju decided to lock her father out of the house and began to hurriedly revise the comic book. In the world of the comic, the police were quickly closing in on the motel where Chul was staying. As they approached Chul's room, just as he was about to be discovered, the door to his room vanished into thin air. In reality, it was Ju who had erased the door, along with the bloodstains in the hallway. Not only that, but she also erased the elevator's surveillance footage, changed the color of Chul's car, and altered the license plate number to help him evade the police. Ju drew many medications, detailed their uses in Chul's room, and left a note telling him that she couldn't cross over to the comic world at the moment, so he had to save himself. Suddenly, the drawing tablet lit up. The culprit discovered Ju was helping Chul and reached out to strangle her. Ju struggled fiercely and managed to turn off the tablet, narrowly escaping disaster. Meanwhile, outside the room, the unconscious Sung, influenced by the culprit, was banging on the door until he collapsed just as the tablet was switched off. Ju helped her father into the room and locked the door to prevent him from following the culprit's orders again. The assistant came to the studio, and while they were talking, Ju disappeared once more. This time, Ju found herself in the prosecutor's office, back in the comic world. The prosecutor was on the phone with his back turned to her, discussing the investigation into her case. Ju attempted to sneak out quietly, but was discovered. She opened the door and dashed out. The prosecutor was puzzled by the sudden appearance of an extra person in his room, especially since that person seemed to be the very Jew he was searching for. Ju made a quick getaway, planning to find Chul. She couldn't understand how she had teleported into the prosecutor's office. After much thought, she concluded that all tasks within the comic could summon her at will. As time sped up, a month quickly passed. Ju learned from a convenience store clerk that Chul had been in hiding all month, and rumors were circulating that he might be dead. She found the motel where Chul had been staying, but discovered he was no longer there. Through Yoon, she learned of Chul's hideout. She found him, and they spent time together at the market, sharing ice cream, which led to an unexpected warmth from Chul that left Ju flustered. They then shopped at the supermarket. Chul wanted to cook for Ju. His affection was due to having seen the romantic gestures his character in the comic wanted to do with Ju. It's then revealed that during his time alone in the hotel, he followed the instructions on Ju's note, enduring the pain of treating himself. Once recovered, he walked out of the room only to realize that from the outside, the wall showed no sign of a door, as if the room never existed. His car had also changed color, and thus began his life of hiding. He noticed his arm occasionally becoming transparent. Chul asked Yoon to find Ju, but the search was fruitless until they found a comic book belonging to her, which she had accidentally brought into the real world during her last visit. The injured from a shooting incident had just been brought into the hospital, and Ju left the comic book aside as she went to work. Unbeknownst to her, a colleague had picked up the comic book and handed it to Yoon, which eventually ended up with Chul. After reading the comic, Chul almost understood the truth and asked Ju if the husband in the comic, Chul, was actually him. The moment he asked this question, everything around them stopped and the glowing plane appeared once again. Chul led Ju through the plane. Back in the real world, Chul calmly accepted all the facts. Ju took him to her father's room, and after holding on for so long, she finally passed out from exhaustion. Ju's disappearance left the assistant very scared. Seeking reassurance, he asked Ju's colleague to stay with him. Unexpectedly, Chul appeared holding Ju as he came out of the room, shocking the assistant. Her colleague took Ju to the hospital while Chul stayed behind. After hearing from the assistant about the ending Sung had intended for the comic, Chul walked into Sung's room. Facing the faceless man, he said, It's his fault for having treated Sung as a god capable of changing fate, and Sung is really nothing at all. Chul then reopened the drawing tablet and informed the culprit that everything was at a standstill and that he had sealed the exit himself, leaving the culprit powerless. However, the culprit was not afraid because he knew that Chul, now a murderer and a fugitive, had lost his status as the protagonist and would soon vanish from the comic world. All the culprit had to do was wait for Chul to die, and then the comic world could be restarted. Afterward, Ju finally woke up, doubting whether all she had experienced was just a dream until she received a call from Chul. 
She felt relieved, confirming that it was not a dream. The weather was nice today, and Chul asked Ju out on a date. While getting ready, Ju talked with the assistant on the phone, who told her that there was something strange with Chul's hand. Ever since he lost his protagonist status, it sometimes became transparent as if he was about to disappear from the comic. As they spoke, Chul arrived at Ju's place, wanting to see where she had always lived. Her room was decorated with comic strips about the two of them. Chul thanked Ju for not forgetting him but keeping him in her heart. Ready to leave, they just wanted to date like any ordinary couple for the last day. Ju took Chul to a restaurant, and she couldn't help but notice Chul's left hand, which he kept hidden, and it worried her. In the meantime, Chul had talked a lot with Sung and the real culprit. He had figured out the whole story and also understood why the plan he and Sung had made had failed. It turns out, on the day he was stabbed on the rooftop, the culprit was also there. After Sung was pulled into the comic, Chul stabbed him, but surprisingly Sung was not injured. The culprit stopped Sung as he tried to flee, questioning why he wasn't hurt after being stabbed. From that moment on, the culprit knew the truth about the comic world, even before Chul did. Sung, in order to save his life, had no choice but to agree to the culprit's demands to draw him a face and make him the protagonist. However, once back in the real world, Sung broke the agreement. Furious and humiliated, the culprit consumed Sung's face. Since the culprit was always conscious, the plan Sung and Chul thought of to dismiss everything as a dream was impossible. Therefore, the plan was doomed to fail. Learning that, Chul comprehended that Sung was not the god of the comic world. He could only decide the fates of a few characters he drew. There were thousands of characters in the comic world. It wasn't possible for Sung to determine all their destinies. The comic was merely a bridge between two worlds. In fact, it was a world unto itself. Sung could only regain his face by killing the culprit. Their repeated failures were due to a lack of understanding of the rules between the two worlds. Now it was time to use these rules. Chul had a new plan. He wanted Ju to draw the original intended ending, but the final scene had to be of Chul marrying Ju and living happily ever after. That would be the perfect ending for them in the world of the comic. Through the assistant, Chul learned that in the comic world, the culprit's residence had not been drawn yet, which is why the police were clueless and couldn't find the real culprit. However, the culprit's residence had a prototype in the real world. So Chul went to this building and found the door to the room corresponding to the culprit's home. Gun ready, he then messaged Ju to start in 10 minutes. Based on a rule of the comic world, the consciousness of the characters can summon people from the real world. So Chul believed that he, as a character, could summon himself back into the comic. Standing at the door, he pondered this and, as expected, entered the comic. He kicked open the door and there was the culprit's home. After a fierce fight, Chul gained the upper hand, captured the culprit, and tied him up before calling the police to catch him. Ten minutes later, Ju opened her drawing tablet as agreed and drew a car for Chul to use. Then, at Chul's place, she drew a decomposing body with DNA identical to her own. Chul instructed Yoon that his body would soon appear and asked him to call the police. As for Sohee, he believed it's better to keep her in the dark about his feigned death, allowing her to find a new direction in life without obsessing over Chul. Soon after, the police arrived at the residence and caught the culprit. Chul's body was also discovered shortly after. With all matters resolved, Chul had Ju draw him a lost wedding ring. He returned to the door of the culprit's home. Based on another rule of the comic world, Chul, summoned from the real world, could return to reality after completing a mission. Just as Chul expected, the To Be Continued caption appeared, and he was back in the real world. He immediately called Ju to continue their date. He still had many things he wanted to do with her. Hearing Chul's voice, Ju felt relieved, knowing that the mission was complete. The two had cooperated and finally accomplished Chul's plan. Ju drew a body for Chul, and he placed a handwritten will next to the body. Because through the comic, Chul had seen the culprit and the prosecutor talking on the phone earlier. In his will, he told the police to investigate their call records. The prosecutor, upon hearing that he was mentioned in Chul's will and fearing for his own safety, deleted his and the culprit's recorded conversations. He couldn't understand how Chul could have known about their phone conversation. With the culprit arrested and hearing of Chul's demise, he was upset and demanded to meet with the prosecutor. As a result, the prosecutor realized that the culprit had to be removed quickly. Ju breathed a sigh of relief upon witnessing through the comic how the culprit and the prosecutor had turned against each other. It seemed that everything was proceeding according to their plan. However, her father's face had yet to return to normal. Ju waited patiently, believing that everything would work out for the best. 
Following Chul's plan, the prosecutor was expected to send some thugs to assassinate the culprit. Chul had already notified Yoon to pass this intelligence on to the government and the media. Subsequently, the prosecutor would be arrested and imprisoned, clearing Chul of all charges. Thus, although Chul was dead in the comic world, he would regain his reputation as the protagonist, averting the crisis of disappearance. The story was set to have a perfect ending, allowing Chul to return to Ju's side, becoming a special individual who traversed both worlds. Ju fantasized about the day her father would regain his face, and she could formally introduce Chul to her parents. To win his future father-in-law's approval, Chul would start with Sung's hobbies, like playing chess with him. Soon after, Chul planned to return to the comic world to ensure everything was going according to plan, and to say goodbye to Yoon. Ju's final task was to draw evidence of the prosecutor's recorded conversations. If all went well, Sung would retrieve his face by evening. The hotel where Chul stayed in the comic had a real-world counterpart. Chul was prepared to summon himself back into the comic through the hotel. As he reached the hotel lobby, Chul surprisingly saw Sohee, wondering how he could see Sohee here since he was still in the real world. Meanwhile, Ju arrived at her father's studio and heard someone calling her name. Turning around, she saw her father. His face had been restored. Father and daughter, having survived great adversity, embraced in a long-awaited reunion, and everything seemed to have returned to normal. After entering the comic, Chul heard from Yoon about a strange incident that so he experienced. She had gone to the hotel lobby, and though it was night, upon exiting the hotel, it was suddenly daytime outside. She saw Chul driving past, but soon after, both he and his car disappeared, and the surroundings abruptly turned back to night. Chul furrowed his brow upon hearing this, wondering if there were rules of this world that he still did not understand. He realized that he indeed thought of so he when he arrived at the hotel lobby by car. This indicates that he could summon characters from the comic into the real world, and if this rule applied, he might have unwittingly summoned someone without realizing it. As Chul suspected, he had indeed summoned someone, the culprit. Meanwhile, in the real world, when Sung heard that Chul was now in the comic, he immediately changed his demeanor. It turned out he was not Ju's real father, but the culprit. Just before, the culprit had been detained in the comic world's interrogation room. He was inexplicably summoned to the real world by Chul. The culprit took a policeman hostage, stole a police uniform and patrol car, and went to Sung's house. There, he changed into his clothes. He had planned to kill both Ju and Chul, but he hadn't expected that Chul wouldn't be there, only Ju was. After reading the comic, the culprit learned the secret of Chul's ability to travel between the two worlds. So, he kidnapped Ju and entered the comic using the same method. Before leaving, he woke up Sung and through the drawing board, controlled him to draw everything he needed, such as a car, a gun, and a cell phone. The prosecutor's men, sent to assassinate the culprit, failed to find him after his disappearance. The prosecutor became enraged, but he was soon approached by the culprit who informed him that Chul was not dead yet. If he wanted Chul dead, he would have to follow his orders. The culprit demanded a place to stay, and then forced Sung to do one last thing, destroy the drawing board. In the comic, when Chul heard news of the culprit's escape, he guessed that the culprit had gone to the real world, so he immediately returned there. But by the time he arrived at Sung's house, the people were gone, and the drawing board was destroyed. Chul re-entered the comic, and this time he went to the prosecutor's office and beat him up, demanding the culprit's whereabouts. The prosecutor couldn't figure out how Chul had entered his office, just like Ju had before. There must be something he didn't know. Meanwhile, the culprit, holding Ju hostage, went to a warehouse, preparing to shoot her. Chul was driving frantically, searching for Ju and the culprit when suddenly he saw the words to be continued, floating in midair, ending the episode and allowing Chul to vanish and return to reality. Back in reality, Chul checked the comic to see what had happened and learned the current location of Ju and the culprit. He entered the comic again, and as gangsters found the warehouse, Ju took the chance to run for her sexy life, but was shot by the culprit without hormone mercy. The gangsters burst in, and the culprit quickly dealt with them. When Chul arrived outside the warehouse, the culprit had been waiting in a car for a long time. The two cars charged towards each other and collided head-on. A gunfight erupted between Chul and the culprit, ending with the culprit being shot dead by Chul's barrage of bullets. After dealing with the culprit, Chul went to find Ju, but only found several lines of blood on the ground. Ju had disappeared. It seemed that she had returned to reality after the end of the last comic episode. Chul also quickly returned to reality. In the real warehouse, workers found Ju covered in blood and immediately reported to the police. 
When Chul arrived, Ju had already been taken to the hospital for emergency treatment. Several policemen were investigating the warehouse. Chul rushed to the hospital, and when asked by the police about his relationship with the injured person, Chul replied, he's her husband. In the comic, the prosecutor approached the warehouse and discovered that the culprit had died. He took the culprit's cell phone and then found a drawing board in the trunk of the culprit's car. Back in reality, Sung's expression returned to normal upon learning that his daughter had been injured and taken to the hospital. He rushed there. Ju had just finished surgery and was yet to regain consciousness. The doctor warned Chul that Ju might never wake up again. But Chul refused to give up so easily, so he took Ju into the comic world. Since there was no hope left in reality, he decided to try his luck in the comic. Chul stayed with Ju in the comic's hospital for several days, but her condition did not improve. After four days, Ju stopped breathing. Meanwhile, in reality, Sung discovered his daughter's disappearance and guessed that Chul must have taken her back into the comic. He went home to wait for news of his daughter. Before long, Chul returned to the real world and informed Sung that his daughter had died. Overwhelmed by guilt, Sung collapsed and was hospitalized. The guilt of shooting at his own daughter was consuming him. He ran to the rooftop, contemplating suicide, but Chul stopped him. Chul told him that there might still be a chance. Since Ju had married him in the comic, she was now a comic character and might be saved through the comic. Sung had destroyed the drawing board under the coercion of the culprit. Then Sung remembered that before destroying the board, the culprit had taught him to draw a backup board, which was hidden in the trunk of the culprit's car in the comic world. Now, the drawing board was in the prosecutor's hands. Chul entered the comic and reached the prosecutor's office, where he indeed found a drawing board on the desk. However, as Chul took a closer look, he realized it wasn't the board he was looking for, and just as he sensed the trap, a needle was jabbed into his neck. Chul was captured by the prosecutor and locked in a warehouse. It turns out, the prosecutor had discovered the magic of the drawing board. Whatever he drew would appear beside him. The prosecutor beat Chul, demanding to know the secrets behind it all. Chul explained that his wife Ju had died and that the drawing board had the power to bring her back to life, but only the comic's master could do so. Therefore, the board needed to be taken to the hospital, where the comic master was located. The prosecutor sent someone to Chul's house to confirm that Ju had indeed died. After some hesitation, he took the drawing board to the hospital, playing right into Chul's plan. Chul intended to use the prosecutor to bring the drawing board to the hospital and then end the comic episode. Once Chul returned to reality, he immediately summoned the prosecutor to the real-world hospital. Everything was going according to Chul's plan. Timing his actions, Chul anticipated that the prosecutor should have reached the hospital by now. He then gave instructions to the assistant outside of the comic world. With those words, the episode ended, and Chul returned to reality. Upon seeing the newly updated comic, the assistant quickly reported to Sung. After Chul returned to reality, he immediately called the prosecutor. However, upon arriving at the hospital room in the comic world, the prosecutor did not find the comic's master and thought he had been tricked. But in a twist of events, the scenery changed as he turned around and he found himself in another world. The prosecutor was suddenly knocked out by the assistant and Sung regained the drawing board and started to draw. Soon after, the prosecutor vanished, being sent back to the comic. Sung anxiously awaited the comic update and finally saw Ju wake up. Ju returned to reality, and by reading the latest comic update, she realized how much effort Chul had made for her. She waited for Chul at the hotel entrance when she suddenly saw So He passing by. Nearby, the words The Final Episode appeared mid-air, and Ju was pulled back into the comic. In the short time between the last episode's ending and now, a whole year had passed in the comic world. According to this updated storyline, a badly injured Chul had just been pulled into the comic a year ago and was captured by the prosecutor and left at the hospital entrance. He was discovered by doctors who realized the death had been faked. Due to previously fabricated murder charges, Chul was sent to prison. To this day, Chul had been in prison for a whole year. Ju found out that Chul had been sentenced to death and today was the day of his appeal hearing. However, with the accumulation of numerous charges against him, the outlook was not positive. Ju arrived at the courtroom and locked eyes with Chul. She watched as he sat quietly accepting his verdict. His appeal was rejected and the death sentence was upheld. Chul had tried countless times to return to reality but had never succeeded. Chul had grown tired of being the protagonist in the comic and it was from that point that the final episode began. Before the end of the final episode, no one could leave. Chul was taken back to prison, but suddenly, a key appeared on his handcuffs. Chul unlocked the handcuffs, and in his hand, he now had a gun. 
On the other side, Ju followed Yoon, originally planning to return to Chul's house, but they hadn't gone far when they heard the news that Chul had broken out of jail. By now, nothing Chul did would surprise Yoon. He asked Ju if there truly was another world, as Chul had claimed. As a death row fugitive, Chul was not at all panicked. He knew that his escape must have been aided by Sung, who had also been pulled into the comic. Through the drawing board, Sung left a note for Chul, who had escaped from prison. The note contained an address. It's the house of Sung in the comic world, which had previously been set by Sung to be a house without an owner. It turns out, when the culprit had ordered Sung to draw a spare drawing board, he had been cunning and drew an extra one, hiding it in this house. Unexpectedly, it now served a purpose. Sung had been living there for the past year. His hands often became transparent, and he discovered that the culprit's memories would sometimes uncontrollably flood into his mind. Sung retained the memories of two people, sometimes unable to distinguish whether he was Ju's father or the culprit. In the comic world, he couldn't help but attack a taxi driver and a police officer, and he was eventually confined to a hospital as a mentally ill person. One morning, Sung's consciousness was overtaken by the culprit, causing him to strangle a nurse and then escape. After escaping, he returned to his residence and learned through the news that Chul's appeal had been rejected. So he drew a picture to help Chul unlock his handcuffs. Sung didn't know when the culprit would awaken again. Afraid that he might harm Ju unconsciously, he tied himself up. Later, Chul brought Ju to her father's residence. Ju was heartbroken to see her father's hands bound. While Ju was cooking, her father and Chul discussed their next steps. He and Chul were destined not to continue together, knowing that if Chul were to have a happy ending, it would inevitably be a tragic ending for Sung. Sung and the culprit had become one and the same. There was no going back. Moreover, the memories of the culprit were tormenting him in his mind. Sung felt as if he had personally killed many people and was filled with guilt. So he asked Chul to let him die, believing that if he met a tragic end in the comic, then Chul and Ju could have a good ending. After Chul's escape, Yoon was captured and tortured by the prosecutor, who wanted to extract the whereabouts of Ju and Chul, but Yoon said nothing. The prosecutor sent a text to Chul, demanding the drawing board be delivered within an hour, or Yoon's life would be in danger. Chul left, leaving the father and daughter at home. Ju was constantly writing and drawing on the drawing board. She drew the scene of the prosecutor torturing and questioning Chul on the monitor, because this could serve as evidence to implicate the prosecutor afterwards. Sung was lying in bed, listening to Ju speak. He planned to open his eyes again, but his expression suddenly changed. He switched to the culprit's personality. He pinned Ju's sexy body to the ground, choking her. Fortunately, after Chul left, he saw police searching everywhere for Sung and hurried back in time to save Ju. Sung regained his own consciousness, realizing he had once again changed into the culprit and harmed his daughter, overwhelmed with guilt. The situation was urgent. The deadline given by the prosecutor was approaching, and the police were about to come to arrest Sung for murder. Ju planned to broadcast the video of the prosecutor's brutal interrogation to bring him to justice. But Chul knew that if he got his happy ending, Sung, playing the culprit, would disappear. Soon, the police found their front door. Chul and Sung were about to be arrested when Ju silently erased the house's doors and windows. When the police entered, they found no door with Chul and Ju still inside. But this trick wouldn't last long. The police would soon find a way in. It was time to make a decision. Chul removed their wedding rings, unwilling to watch Ju and her father fight to the death. He wanted to remove Ju from his family list, making her free and safe from harm. Chul took the father and daughter out the back door to a motel. He left to rescue Yoon. Chul arrived at the arranged spot with the prosecutor, offering himself in exchange for Yoon. He immediately sent his men to take Yoon to the hospital while he confronted the prosecutor. Chul informed the prosecutor that all the interrogation videos were evidence. He used this as leverage to stop the prosecutor from troubling him. But Chul didn't expect the prosecutor to pull out a gun and shoot him. It turns out, the prosecutor had drugged Yoon, learning from him that this was a comic world, and Chul was the comic's protagonist. The prosecutor wanted to kill Chul. After his death, everything would end, and he could go see that real world himself. But Chul fought back with all his might and managed to escape. He stopped his car in front of a bus stop and called Ju. Chul was extremely weak and wanted to see Ju one last time. Ju drew a car for herself, talking to Chul on the phone while driving to him. The call cut off mid-conversation. Chul no longer had the strength to hold the phone. Ju arrived across the street trying to cross, but cars kept passing, blocking her way. She watched helplessly as Chul collapsed. The final credits appeared to show the comic was over. 
Ju didn't see Chol for the last time and returned to reality. Ju looked at the desolate bus stop, her sought-after person no more to be found. The assistant saw the latest update of the comic with the last scene frozen at the bus station. Chul lay there, solitary in his fall. The assistant rushed to the bus station in the real world, only to find Ju wailing into the void like a giant baby. Ju had returned, but her father had not. His replicated drawing board vanished at the moment the comic ended. The two worlds were connected, but with that, the last bridge was severed. After the comic ended, Ju often reminisced about her father and Chul. She couldn't accept the ending for a while. Everyone thought it was a sad ending. As time passed, the sadness would fade, but no one knew that this was not a tragic ending. In the final return, Ju set out to the bus station to find Chul, leaving her father alone in the room, guarded by Yoon's men. After she left, Sung tricked the henchman into untying him and began to draw on the board. He called the prosecutor, locked him in the office while talking to him, and arranged a gun in his hand, sealing his stinky mouth. Thus, the prosecutor, under Sung's manipulation, ended his corrupt prosecuting life with the gun. After the shot, Sung erased the seal from the gun in his mouth, left a suicide note on the prosecutor's table, and a USB drive with incriminating evidence. Sung knocked out the henchman, left a letter and a photo of himself, then drove to see his daughter one last time. He arrived near the bus station, saw Ju standing across the road from afar. By then, Sung was half transparent, ready to vanish at any moment. Watching his daughter, he said goodbye with tears in his eyes and disappeared like smoke, leaving no trace of his hormones. Therefore, Chul's death was not the real ending of the comic. The moment when all the villains were eliminated was the true end. Chul hadn't died. After he collapsed, Yoon arrived and timely took him to the hospital. Everyone thought he was dead because the comic had ended before his rescue. When Chul woke up and heard of Ju's disappearance, he smiled in relief, knowing she must have returned to the real world, and his mission as the comic's protagonist was finally over. In the last letter from Sung to Chul, he expressed his wish for Chul to continue living as a human in reality, while he would die as a comic character. If Chul ever saw Ju again, he was to tell her that her father was still alive and well in the comic. Chul spent two more years in prison, finally freeing himself from all ties in the comic. Not long after, when Ju, once again distraught, came to the bus stop in the rain, soaked, and sitting there, she then saw a figure disembarking from a vehicle and walking towards her. Ju fainted, awakening later in the hospital with a ring on her hand, lying in Chul's embrace but without a kiss. Two years had passed in the comic, but only a week had gone by in reality. Touching Chul's handsome face, Ju felt it all too surreal. She inquired about her father, and Chul handed her a photo, the last memento her father left for her future days. Although Chul had a happy ending in the comic, the ending for Chul and Ju in reality remained uncertain. But they no longer had to live through the harrowing experiences of the comic, standing at the crossroads of life and death every day. They finally obtained ordinary happiness like any other couple, as the series concluded. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.